top four of YCS Utrecht, the 200th YCS. I'm here with Matthew Bell. Hey Luke, how are you doing? I'm doing good. We managed to make it all the way to the top four and it's looking like a pretty cool top four to me. Yeah, we got it's a little bit more wider than I expected it uh, based yeah. on looking at the top eight. Uh, the Altergeist and the Burning Abyss player both managed to make it through. So that's mm -hmm. Bodan on the other part of the top four bracket. And we have Burning Abyss in this one that we're going to be featuring in this round versus yeah. Sky Striker. So two Sky Strikers and two Outsider decks. Yeah, and Burning Abyss right now um, for the whole tournament, not just for this player, was only sitting at about a 32% win rate uh, over the course of the whole tournament. So wow. not fortunate at all uh, Although in saying those that, uh, the Burning Abyss player that we have now was played against the undefeated person in the whole tournament yes. and just knocked him out, like OTK'd him twice in a row. Yeah, so I'm, I'm interested to see exactly what version is being played here. Um, of, the, of the Burning Abyss deck, whether it is similar to Tom Rose's version or With whether the it's, yeah, the Hyperlander yeah. one, or whether it's going to be something completely different that we've not even seen yet. Well, anything could happen. Um, I guess we'll find out as the game goes on. Yeah, exactly. But it, the stats currently say uh, Sky Striker are pretty good against Burning Abyss. Yeah, exactly. Um, and yeah, even even the the, trick, the Sky Striker Trickstar version, it's it's a forty-two percent, so still not great. No, it's not favorable odds, but. We can see what happens. It, uh, on the two, on the big anniversary YCSs, it's usually something that weird that wins, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for the for the total win rates of all the decks, the the top one still sits at Sky Striker Pure with a 64% win rate. Um, if we have a look at where does Burning Abyss actually appear at number 10 um, with a 47% win rate overall, that's yeah, forty-seven. We've seen quite a few. We've seen quite a few players make it into a top cut. So yeah. that, there seems to be the few people that are on it that are doing really well, and then probably a lot of people that are on it that are not doing so well. Yeah, exactly. So uh, in in the top five, we see the pure sky striker at the top, uh, Goki with sixty percent. That gone. dropped. That dropped That's actually. That's gone. Yeah. Um, Gemini FDK still maintained a fifty-seven percent win rate. Uh, we've not actually updated these for a number of rounds, so they may have gone out in the last round of Swiss. Yeah. Um, Sky Striker Trick Star 57% and then True Draco 52 and then from there it just kind of yeah tails off. Yeah. Okay. Well, how about we get into this? Yeah. And then instead of having the numbers talk, we have the players handle that for us. Yeah, but first, let's have our commentators, Oliver German and Tom Payne. Take it away, guys. Thank you guys. And how dare you? How dare you calling Burning Abyss something? Like something weird, in fact. Burning Abyss is one of the standout decks for like five years straight or something like that. Yeah, we featured it like five yeah, times. Yeah, we featured it five times. So, Mr. Yeah. Matt Bell, I take offense to that. Burning Abyss is here to stay. It's not going to go down at all, especially in a sea full of Sky Striker Pure. It's the one thing, the glimmer of hope for us all. We're going to cling to it and we're all going to be cheering for Din Kabui. Is that correct? I really like his deck list. There we it's go. It's really different to Burning Abyss decks that we've seen in the past. So it's packing a huge suite of Burning Abyss monsters and a huge suite of Kaijus. So it looks very much like he wants to go second and OTK his opponent, just like Matt was talking about. Right. Uh, it's also packing the Malicious Engine. Actually, just what happened, uh, guys told me um, that in the previous round, he was going up against Jonas Koschel, who hadn't dropped... Some people said a game. I'm not sure if that is the case. I think they said a match. Uh, yeah. Some people actually said a game. He hasn't dropped the game all weekend. I'm not sure if they were right, but Jonas Koschel, at the run of his life, was undefeated all the way to the top eight, went up against Din Kabui and got 2-0 OTK'd in the first turn of Din in both of these uh, games, actually. But interestingly enough... Uh, Andreas also wants to go second, as oh. we can see clearly by the three copies of evenly matched. And I've seen the players roll the dice, and much to Dinka's Demise. disappointment, <laughs> he lost the dice roll and was made to go second. All right. So I expect he's a bit shocked and a bit upset. Maybe, already. maybe his opponent knows what he's playing. Maybe he's been watching how he just uh, knocked out the one undefeated player this weekend. Uh, let's see if he can somehow re recover from that. I mean, if he, even if he loses the first round, he can make sure to go second in the second game, and then maybe we go to a third and final game to decide this one. It's going to be an exciting match. Let's take you guys to the semi-finals table where Din Kapui is now going to go up against Andreas Vrelos. All right, so here we have them. Here's the handshake. Uh, we do see the dice, as you said, indicating that Din Kapui is forced to go first, basically. So, yeah, so to my mind, I think he's expecting to go second, considering he's running about 10 kaijus. And maybe that's an exaggeration, but he's running almost one of every kaiju. He is also running the Orbital Hydrolander, which we saw in Tom Rose's deck, but it's a very different style of Burning Abyss deck. 
than we saw from Tom Rose. So it's running a huge package of Burning Abyss monsters. I assume just to explode onto the board, use a Gamma Seal or any other Kaiju to shut down all the defensive options of the Sky Striker deck and try and ODK them. Um, and then in Andreas' deck, we are seeing what looks to be the sort of standard Sky Striker deck with a bit of a twist in that he's got a couple of evenly matched. Uh, so he's set up to go second, but he's got all of our favorite anti-Sky Striker tech being Twin Twisters, Shared Ride, um, and the, well, the evenly matched mm -hmm. as well, I guess. Uh, actually, um, I just got word that uh, Andreas Vrelos is the winner of last year's YCS Rimini. I wasn't at that tournament, which is not... That doesn't happen that often. I, I don't miss too many of these. Um, so credit where credit is due. We said at some point somebody is going to win this who's never won anything before, except maybe Bowden Temnik. Uh, he's the other guy in the field who has won a large tournament. So that might be working in his favor here. Indeed. Can we get the uh, the hands up for the players? Um, yeah. We, <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> um, I just think the app is frozen. So interestingly, Dink has chosen to mill one. Which is not actually something you see no, from not the Burning very Abyss. Often. I don't think I've, I've seen a Burning Abyss player mill one. S for sometimes a very if you have time. two cards left in hand, then you mill one. What? Two cards left in the deck? Mm -hmm. <laughs> very possibly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what the reason for that is, but he's, he's, it's presumably something that he has done before. Uh, he's not just trying it out for fun for the first time. And now the players appear to be discussing something, but I don't know what. No, I think uh, they are actually being stopped by our tech crew for that very reason that you just pointed out, that the cards are not showing the up. The cards aren't showing up. I mean, they could just play with their hands, you know, face up towards the camera. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I, th I think we're going <laughs> Sorry, completely missed that you were making a pretty good joke, to be honest. <laughs> I was so focused on the iPad in front of me trying to get it to work. Um, okay. So here we see the Beatrice being made... Uh, a more of an old-fashioned way, so we're used to seeing a... Uh, He's trying to avoid milling Seer. Is Very possibly, but I don't know, because Seer might be in his hand. You never know. I don't know why he doesn't want to mill cards. I think the Burning Abyss does better when it mills more cards, but there's probably a reason for it, because he's in the top four. And he he probably is in the doing. top four, yeah. So often players <laughs> like to make a Link monster first, um, and end with the Burning Abyss not in the extra monster zone. The, the Beatrice not in the extra monster zone, but in this case... It is in the extra monster zone, and the benefit of that is he gets two materials rather than one, assuming that it survives the whole turn. Yeah, we now see the cards that Andreas Varellos was drawing into, so that's 50% success here. 50% success. We do see that evenly matched, and it's not actually going to do all that much against the, the one the Beatrice, monster yeah. on the field. We talked about this before, yeah. I mean, Burning Abyss, all they want is Beatrice, all they need is Beatrice Fixed well, it on their opponent's turn. Again, it wasn't me, but still... I yeah I don't, I mean it's a bit out of date because it does say that that's true. Now it, there's a Dante under the Beatrice. Is that is that what that means? Exactly. Oh that's cool. <laughs> yeah. It lists the materials. Yeah, they that can. could be a bit of a disaster if he had like two X Y Z monsters on the field yeah. and like three well, sets. They, they can list the materials. Uh -huh. It's up to the guys operating that machine. Okay. Um, and here's the hand. We've got everything now. Ooh. So this is really lovely for Dinka because he can get sort of double action from the Beatrice now. Mm -hmm. Because Farfar is underneath the Beatrice being detached for the cost. And then he can use the effect. Uh, so the Farfar is being sent just for the cost of Beatrice. Yeah. And the Fiendish Rhino Warrior is being sent for the effect. And as always, there's a Legola Ola wave going through the chat when they saw that Farfar is in the feature match. Farfa is in the feature match, so Farfa can banish the token now, and because it's a token, it doesn't actually end up coming back. Do you happen to know why why he's the most popular card in the entire TCG? Do you not know? I'm not sure. Somebody said his, his first name is they're Chef. they're talking about the YouTuber. Nobody does. Who goes by no. Farfa. Ah, the whole joke was that it was that I was not aware of that. I now, don't know now if you, you told me. In any event, so we see a very smart play here by Dinker Boy, which I hadn't seen or thought of before. But he sent Alec to the graveyard and used it to negate the effect of his Beatrice, which would pre prevent any possibilities of Andreas using Widow Anchor to steal the Beatrice Ooh. later on in the turn. We've seen that with uh, Tom Rose's match. Uh, he used Alec in a sort of he, he used it in a chain in yeah. order to negate an effect, which is something I had seen before. It's a uh, bit oh, is it sneakier? I think this is. Well, I mean, I think it's possibly a bit sneakier <laughs> uh, than this, but this also works, and I think it's very cool. Uh, and it's not something that I had seen before. 
and it ensures that the Beatrice is going to survive the turn because there isn't really a good way outside of Widow Anchor to get rid of it. And in fact, I think at this point, though, just using the Farfa on his opponent's token is going to be enough to put him in a very commanding position because Andreas doesn't have any other way to get a Link monster on the field. Yeah, and you, actually he was like slightly shaking his head here. He wasn't very happy with that development here. So yeah, the, he did have the engage, but he well, he went for the sort of riskier play of using engage yeah, to pick up. Just, uh, just chuckling real quick with his with his shoulders. He's like, nah, tour guide, don't want to see that. Well, he knew the tour guide was there because it was searched last turn. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's a bit, bit unimpressed or not happy. So we're now going to see Dinka making a reasonably large push because you're not going to link away Beatrice unless you're making a large push, right? Yeah, I mean, so we, I, we did say that his deck can be very explosive. Very explosive indeed. And the use of the... Um, ah, see, this is the advantage of the Burning Abyss deck, not running any spells and traps, and all these people are packing all the spell and trap removal. Yeah. So I really like the malicious package, you know. Are we going to see him now completely unpacking now? Is he going to throw everything at the table but the kitchen sink? Almost. Almost. Is it going to be enough to do 8,000? Uh, well, if there's a Boral Sword involved, then very often 8,000 is done. And it looks like Getting Boral rid of Sword three. is going to be involved. That does look like a Boral Sword to me. Uh, I'm going to make him a very weird compliment. I like the way he moves. It's like you like the way he moves. Yeah, he's, he's not like, moving very much. He's very, very confident the way he's like getting rid of the cards, bringing out a new card, and everything. Well, I think he knows he's going to win this game. Maybe that's it. He's got some swagger. He has Cowboy. got some swagger. Yeah. I mean, he has got the widow anchor. He, he, the only real fear defensive card that you expect from Sky Striker is a widow anchor. Mm -hmm. However, I think it's very possible that widow anchor would have been used already from Andreas. I don't know why he wouldn't have used it last turn to negate the Beatrice effect. So he, he does have a snowing graveyard and infinite ways to bring it back. Infinite ways to bring it back, but the main threat is the Boral Sword, and he just wants the double attack from the Boral Sword to go through yeah. to end the game. And I think that is what's going to happen, because all we know is card face down is evenly matched. Yeah, uh, it doesn't, in fact, doesn't no, help it's not you. evenly matched. Why is this face down? Um, Hornet Drones. Ah, oh. it was Hornet Drones set off the multi-roll. Oh, yeah. That's definitely a game. That, yeah. Didn't Kabui doesn't 100% know that, or does he? No, it was set off the multi-roll, so he doesn't yeah. know that. He doesn't know that yet, but he he, he won't care, I guess. He's just going to go for it no, either he, way. He saw it set off the multi-roll. Oh, okay. So he knows what it is. Either way, he's, he's got the snow, he's got the Dante, he's us. got the Boral Sword Dragon. Um, there are, I see a big, big uh, couple of damage points coming, basically flying in Andreas Rello's face. And I don't see him stopping that. Uh, so he can prevent one attack Okay. using the drones as a chump blocker, as oh, it sometimes well, This is what you usually do with that card, right? Uh, no, normally <laughs> you make a Link Monster. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Just checking. Yeah. Don't trust you. Uh, not anymore. Well, last time I joked that you could use the uh, the Mine Crush on a... You joked that you could use the Mine Crush on the Widow. That you? wasn't a joke. That, that wasn't a joke. That was a prediction, that, yeah. and that happened. <laughs> so, who's laughing now? <laughs> who's laughing now? I, I, I know one anymore. I think they just... Yeah, definitely not the player that was on the receiving end of that. Okay, so Snow is coming back for the first time. We should have a Snow counter, really. Yeah, so Boral Sword being used now... So make it make life easier later. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so this is going to ensure the game for Dinka because he can now force Hornet drones to be used now. Yeah, that's what he does. And now that the Hornet drones being used, the uh, question is, does Andreas even try and activate them, or is he going to straight up I mean, shuffle? He can up. activate he's it, but he's just going to yeah. He's straight yeah. Up so if he activates it now, then there's nothing. He can just yeah. attack over it. With Why give it away? Burning Abyss going 1-0. I don't know if you guys can hear it. I'm speaking a little bit louder than usual because the crowd was just erupting a tiny little bit. They seem to find that very funny. They are happy with Burning Abyss. Because They're happy to see the Burning Abyss deck just pick apart the Sky Striker deck as if it were nothing. Everybody is rooting for the underdog. In this case, Dante and his pals are the underdog. And uh, Din Kabui is just one win away from securing a place in the finals, knocking out one of the last two players in competition that have won a very, very large tournament before. Uh, Andreas Vrelos, winner of YCS Rimini last year. And um, yes, somebody just said dominant performance. I just want to second that. Our time display looks a bit funny to me. I feel like they've been playing for longer than... Yeah, they minute. definitely did play for longer than that. They, <laughs> they got some extra time with, with the little hassle, um, with the technical equipment. Um, ah. But 
not 38 minutes. <laughs> I would say they are like eight minutes down is what I guess. I think like 32 minutes, something like that. I mean, in given the that speed of that first game, it's unlikely to come into yeah, play. Yeah, yeah. But, but you never know. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Din Kapui doesn't want this game to go to time. He just wants to 2 0 <laughs> clean sweep victory his opponent here. And so far, he's well on track for doing just that. So, having a look at the side deck, I don't know what Dinka's plan is for when he's likely to go first. Mm -hmm. He's got the Majesty's Fiend, but Majesty's Fiend against Sky Striker, probably they they're yeah. mainly want their spells, right? Yeah. So, it's not going to do so much. I mean, maybe Ash, but Ash isn't. A, it, it's a good card against Sky Striker, maybe, but it's not. It's nothing. There's no power cards going first. So I think his plan was always, if given the choice, he was just going to go second. So yep. it doesn't look like he's got any cards specifically for going first. So it might be that he chooses not to side deck anything. Um, and it looks like his plan, his deck is very much built to go second against Sky Striker. That's what he's going to do. He, yep. he knows what's coming against the Sky Striker deck. And did Andreas Relos immediately figure that out? Or do you think he's still not 100% sure? I mean, I think Andreas knows that Dinka's got a deck built to beat Sky Strikers, considering he's this far in the tournament and has probably played about 100 Sky Striker decks already. I'm just going to quickly look up their history, because maybe they played against each other before. It wouldn't and be the first time yeah. we've seen that. Andreas doesn't really look like he's got too much exciting in the side deck. So there is the Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries. They used to be a very popular side deck against the Burning Abyss, but no one considers Burning Abyss, and Ghost Reaper needs a target in the extra deck, and no one is including Dante in the extra deck. I think Kabui has basically played against half of the players that ended up in the top 64 over the course of this tournament. Um, so if I'm going to be honest, that's pretty good. Yeah. If you've beaten... He, if you've had such a difficult run, you saw him playing Zekius Shah, Nico Schleerkamp, Schleerkamp yeah. Eric yeah. Beck. Yeah, and that was all of that was before the top 64, so... It's not like he's not used to playing against some really, really good players. So here, as expected, Dink has been made to go first again. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we see, so one of the one of the nastier things that can happen to your fiendish rhino warrior is that can get hit by infinite impermanence. So that negates its effect that prevents the burning abyss monsters from destroying themselves, which means all the burning abyss monsters destroy themselves. <laughs> yeah, and well, that's not what you want, because then you can't use them to XYZ. Sir. Not exactly, no. So this is perhaps a bit of a worse start for Dinka and a bit of a better start for Andreas. Yeah, I'm just checking if Andreas Relos went up against Burning Abyss. Yes, he went up against Thomas Rose, in fact, and kicked him out of the tournament. That was in the top 32. That is the only time this weekend that we that he went up against Burning Abyss. So, so this is a very different flavor of Burning Abyss deck to Thomas yeah. Rose deck. Yeah, that's true, but still, still some some experience. Yeah, but only one one uh, match. It's because Din Kapui has been playing against Sky Striker all, all weekend day. long. Yeah, and we see this. So I think it's fair to say that the Sky Striker deck is just a more powerful deck. But what we have is Dinka Boy's toned his deck up to beat the Sky Striker deck which is going to give him enough of an advantage to possibly to make up for the difference in power of the decks. Mm -hmm. And because we've seen, we're seeing two cards in Andreas' hand, Shared Ride and Ghost Ogre, which typically, if, if you're going to ask someone, you know, what cards do you want against Burning Abyss, no one is going to tell you those cards. But because they're already in his main deck and he doesn't really have any cards to side in, he doesn't have enough ways to rotate out all of the cards. He definitely needs to get rid of the spell and trap removal. He's got one Typhoon, one Mystical Space Typhoon, three Twin Twisters. So that's five cards that have to come out of his deck. Yeah. So cards which are still fairly subpar, like Ghost Ogre, like Shared Ride, um, still have to stay in the main deck, which is which is not great. <laughs> not not ideal. Not ideal. This is the official coverage term. So here we might get to see from Dinka the nice tech of fabled sulkius if we're very lucky maybe not he might choose to send skarm or graph which is a bit more boring but fabled sulkius is a level six fiend and you can discard two cards from your hand to special summon it from the graveyard and if one of those cards is destiny hero malicious then you mm -hmm. can banish that malicious to summon another one i give you two level sixes so you can make beatrice i don't want to say the old-fashioned way i don't know which way is the way you're supposed to make beatrice because it is a burning abyss card um, but you kind of make Beatrice prop. Which way? Yeah, I don't know which way is properly. <laughs> but you make it a different way to the way Burning Abyss normally makes it by overlaying two level sixes as opposed to discarding a card and putting it on top of Dante. Right. So going to the second game, um, you mentioned Think Up. We always wants to go first. Now he's no, uh, he wants to go uh, sorry. Wants to go second. Yes. Um, he's made to go first for a second time. How happy can he be with his opening? 
especially after that hand trap came down. I, yeah, I the hand trap was actually the most effective hand trap, I would say, against mm. that situation. There's not many cards which deal effectively with, uh, you know, just a, what does trying, trying to, to do? normal yeah. summon special animals from your hand. So we see the clever play here of Andreas. I don't know if he's aware of the number of kaijus in the hand of... Uh, Dinka Boy. Dinka Boy, or in the deck of Dinka Boy in particular. But he's chosen to send the... Sky Striker Link Monster on his field to the graveyard in order to prevent a kaiju being placed on top of it. Mm. Uh, and that would then shut off his Sky Striker spells for a turn, and that's not something he wants to happen. So that's a clever play. It's something we thought saw uh, Themis do in the feature match yeah. earlier to prevent possible kaiju or possible shadow fusion. Right. So uh, long, maybe, long time ago. maybe some Greek players communicating about something. See, here we see Ogre being used on... Dante. Dante, yeah. And if you ask someone, you know, was this going to be being done in 2018, they probably would have said, what are you talking about? Why would anyone ogre a Dante? It just gets a card back. That's really rubbish. Right. But it's just because he's got he's, he's got it in the deck. He might as well use it. He's got nothing better he's to do. nothing else to do with it, yeah. So, and also, in, in case of Din Kapui's deck, I don't think you want to give him any field presence because you know that he can just add those cards um, and <laughs> together he's going to dish out a lot of damage. Any which way you can stop him from doing that is a win. Indeed. So, we, yeah, we see the milled uh, Sekka's Light. So it can be used to shuffle a monster from his deck. From, from his hand into his deck and uh -huh. draw another card. And that other card happened to be Sekka's Light. This which is, is how you do it, kids. At all times, the best draw. Unless you already have another Sekka's Light, basically. Yeah. Because it just draws you two more cards. And it's got a great graveyard effect. So this is one of the big, big benefits of wow. playing Burning Abyss, is drawing that second slide. So that's a really big play for Din Kabui. Um, refilling his hand here, and now where is he going to go from here? I He's got two copies of Malicious in his hand. I see him doing anything more exciting this turn, if I'm going to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, he's He probably doesn't want to be... If you special summon the Burning Abyss monsters from your hand, then you can't use their graveyard effects. You yeah. can only use one of their effects a turn. So that would leave a Dante. I mean, he, he is going to... I can't remember if he's normal summoned. Um, but no, I don't think so. I think it was special summoned before. He's just going to attack with a graph. Maybe he just special summoned the graph and attacked. Well, that um, works. <laughs> yeah. And we're still a few minutes away from timeout, to put it lightly. <laughs> so that's not the strategy here. No, not at all. Uh, so you mentioned the two malicious, but one of the one of the other many upsides to Sekka's Light is it shuffles a card from your hand back into your deck, so you can actually get rid of one of those maliciouses. Yeah, I was giving you that assist. I was just waiting for you to pick up the ball and score the goal. Yeah, and you like, saw that one coming. Yeah, I did actually. And then in overtime, you went for it. All right. Well, we got it. We got there eventually. So, what do you think Andrews is going to do now then? Yeah. Just let's check out his field again. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the Widow Anchor, Engage, Area Zero. I learned over the course of this tournament that Engage is a really good card. Um, Didn't you know that before? <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> just, I just like to sell myself short, yeah. give you more credit. Uh, he doesn't have three spells in the graveyard yet, or at least just yet. Uh, I think he might have just put a third that, one yeah, in the Yeah, that, that was the move. Pulling double duty there with that multi-roll, preventing mm -hmm. uh, any... Anything being chained to his engage and putting a third spell in grave for the engage. So the graph on the board is a fairly safe play because normally your opponent, uh, Sky Striker players, will deal with your monsters by taking them with Widow Anchor if mm -hmm. they think it's an annoying monster to deal with. But graph gets its effect no matter how it ends up in the graveyard. Exactly. Yeah. Just wanted to, to end up in the graveyard and you're happy. And you mentioned earlier that uh, Sky Striker is not dishing out tons of damage in one turn usually. Oh yeah. Unless sure. you, you place a lot of monsters in front of them that they can then take control of with the Widow, widow Anchor. So <laughs> Graf is like really good in this situation. It's not high attack, Yeah. so it doesn't threaten Din Kabui's own, li own life points. Uh, he's probably going to get the effect at, at the end of the turn. So yeah, things are going okay here. Yeah, I, if I was Dinka, I would probably be a bit concerned that the Sky Striker players just resolve one copy of Engage. He's not going to be able to stop them resolving another copy of Engage. Mm. I mean, but his hand has still got five cards in it. It's Did still just fairly pass? packed. No, he just no, asked no. about the number of cards. Yeah, so yeah. his hand has still got five cards. He's going to be able to tune it up a bit next turn with the engraved Sekka's Light. So maybe he's happy just sitting here 
waiting and seeing what his opponent's going to do. Even if he did, I don't think he's actually that bothered by the number of cards that Andreas has if he can execute his own win condition, which is giving a kaiju, summoning a load of monsters, and attacking the game. All right. Ooh. However, I'm going to eat my words here with that monster reborn. We might eat some words here. So, monster reborn is probably not a card. Well, it's not a card I've seen in any of the many, at least, of the other Sky Striker decks. Yeah. Because typically, it's not a card which helps you. It doesn't help you get going. Both I mean, players immediately looking at the life point total. Uh, I think both of them know that that uh, is 1, enough for the game. 1,000 something? No, I don't think so. I think there's 1,000 something yeah. left for Dinkabu. Ah, but you've got the effect of Ray. Oh, so there's more so coming. So you contribute yeah. in there. Dinkabu is still still wondering a little bit about it. He's still looking at I the score I think he pad. might still be a bit shocked that his opponent just activated Monster Reborn <laughs> and attacked the game, if I'm going to be totally <laughs> honest. Oh, no. Okay. Because Monster Reborn is not a card that we see in all Sky Striker decks. I mean, it gives it a bit more explosive power. And if you're expecting mirror matches, then I could see why you would include it, because it also has the extra option to start your engine of picking up a Sky Striker monster. Mm. I mean, personally, I wouldn't want too many cards that aren't either defensive or able to pick up a Sky... Uh, or able to start my engine. And Monster right. Reborn doesn't actually fit into either of those categories. But in this case, it looks like... Is it doing enough for game? No, it's two, at the moment it's 2.6. How big is it's it? It's now down to 700. Oh. Still not enough for game. I'm interested as to why he made that play if it was not going to attack for game. And interestingly enough, Dinkab, it doesn't look like he's in control. I mean, obviously he isn't. He doesn't have any way to stop him. But before that, in the first game, there never was a moment when, when we saw him like lose his cool in a way. And this was the first time he was genuinely surprised by his opponent's move. If I was him, yeah, I would have been like, Shocked. what just happened? Yeah. Why, why did he... Why, what is the Monster Reborn doing there? Because this isn't a card that we're expecting to see. Yeah. And why you know and then and then the fact that he's played it and not attacked for game because that seemed like a, quite a large investment of resources yeah. and it's sort of this thing you would you would expect to see him attack for game in that situation you'd expect to see the burst of cards use your sort of trump card and attack for game and yeah. then that hasn't happened so he's probably doubly confused first at seeing the monster reborn and then at being alive at the end but i suppose you just kind of roll with it in that situation and say, well, you know what, that's probably better than I, having I think, lost the game. I think if Andreas Vrelos would have brought out the score pad before he made all of his moves and did a couple of calculations, Stinkab would have been way more shocked because he kind of sees that whole thing coming. We talked about that score pad effect. And then it would have been all very differently because, first of all, Andreas Vrelos might have not gone through all of these motions when he knows that he cannot oh, yeah, actually that, kill his that opponent. That may have been a calculation error, I don't know. Maybe he just thought double attack from Ray, big kaiju, that's quite a lot of damage. Yeah. <laughs> quite a lot is usually enough. Quite a lot is usually enough, but, but in this case it was not. Not in this case. So, sudden, um, Andreas Vrelos now has four face down cards. Uh, we can see all of those with our perfect information, with our eagle eye that can actually look under the table. Ooh. Ooh. And uh, Dinka Bui now has a full hand, uh, has a bit of a setup, needs to play through a million cards, but he's still alive. Can he regain his composure and come back from this? I think perhaps. <laughs> but it's hard to tell because that Widow Anchor, he, his plan seems very much drop a kaiju on your opponent's board. Yeah. and then um, go crazy go crazy but if his opponent's denying him the opportunity to do that as he's 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 seen we've seen him do twice now mm -hmm. um although i think he used that multi roll twice that turn maybe he no he used the area zero the second time okay so he's yeah denied him the opportunity to drop a kaiju so now his sky strike spells are definitely going to be online mm -hmm. this turn uh, which might make a reasonable difference to the sort of plays he needs that Dinkaboy can play. He needs a black garden in his day. <laughs> he needs a black garden. That is that would be very cool. Here's some lead to take for you. Lead, yeah, that would be pretty pretty interesting. Although he wouldn't be able to activate it now because he has already activated Zekka's Light. Sadly. Sadly, yeah. Oh. Puns for days. All right. So here we're going to see a chain of about three cards. Ah, uh, maybe only two. Don't need to be that disappointed. I know, we've got Cerberus and we've got Phoenix. Not Cerberus. Phoenix um, and Seer. And Dinka Bui actually did regain his composure. This is his uh, usual expression on his face when, when he's playing, at least from the little time I watched him so far. So I would say that things are going his way again. Um, so how much they're going his way, we're going to find out here. 
Got the malicious to the graveyard. So it looks like Andrews has faced down to all interruptions. That's quite impressive. Yeah, three copies He's of Widow Anchor. Three Widow Anchor, one of which was hit by the... Um, well, unsurprisingly, one of which was hit... The Nightmare Phoenix. By the Nightmare... Uh, yeah, the Nightmare Phoenix, because they were all that. If he'd hit the Shark Cannon, that would have been the worst possible mm. option, because the Shark Cannon was cha was activated immediately to banish the militia anyway, so it just would, it would have been chained. But that was only a one in four. So, uh, where is Snow when you need it? Where is Snow when you need it? Does he need it? I think he's all got all different monsters in his graveyard anyway, so this Orbital Hydralander is going to find its way onto the board. And Andreas knows now that he's not going to be able to um, use the last Widow Anchor anyway because it's going to be bounced to his hand, so yeah. he might as well use this one to take control of his opponent's monster. That might mean that he gets an opening for that Kaiju. This is an opening, this is amazing. So Andreas had four interruptions and all of them are gone. That's within the blink of an eye. Yeah, it's just crazy. We haven't seen that very often. So this game uh, might hinge on whether the Orbital Hydralander hits. And again, look at the way that Din Kapu is playing. He's getting faster, 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 going through the motions again. He he knows he's seeing the opening. It's a bit like when you had the Trickstar players that saw that oh, they can go for the that combo. Is game. That is game. That snow is he definitely game. He finds snow, yeah. gets rid of that card. And you can tell it now, the story on both these guys' faces. Andreas Vrelos not happy with what's happening. Tinka Pui just going through the motions like a robot Dinka in a way. No, he's he he's knows a burning Abyss robot master. Look at this guy, 700 life, completely non plus. Goes into his turn, just goes through the motions. And now he's just going to beat I'm by beat, step by step. the crowd's reaction to him summoning the, uh, okay, the Orbital Hydralander because they could see it in his hand. <laughs> you, no, 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 no. They are more excited if they, <laughs> they see it on the They want to see field. it on the board. Yeah, nobody pays attention that to... that snow is insane. So it's, the, the people cannot read what's on the side and they cannot hear <laughs> us. So they're just going to wait for the artwork. And that, and is, that is just game on the table. Yet another round of applause for Din Kabui, who's going to advance just... to the finals. Yeah, I'd say that's 8,000, but maybe we should check. Look at him. He's just... Yeah, that's 8,000. I, I love oh, he's gonna put how he's just more. going through this. Coral Sword. Why do 8,000 when you can do like 20,000? I mean, he gets a free applause for every single summon, so he might as well take it. <laughs> People are losing their... What a win. <laughs> Getting up and screaming Dinker Boy for is him. the most nonplussed out of everyone here. Super, I love it. I absolutely love it. Look at this guy. Um, I've never seen anybody destroy his opponent with that much. Are we going to see an expression here? Yeah, that yeah was a smile. there we go. That was a smile. All right, guys. Little wink. Let's Just let's talk camera. about that in the post-match analysis. <laughs> and talk about people loving to root for the underdog. Tin Kapu just got a very very big round of applause from. I don't know if all of these guys are their friends, but definitely everybody is a fan of his in this very moment. Oh, his deck is amazing. I love it. Yeah, and we were just like talking about this, looking at the field with Andreas Relos like going all in in a way like pushing for damage. Three um, negations in his back row. Four. Four, four in fact, yeah. So you're, usually you're like, okay, there's there's no way around. He's got a kaiju, but the kaiju cannot go live. Yeah, the kaiju was, I mean, Andreas very cleverly did not leave a monster on his board to get yeah. hit by the kaiju. So it wasn't that Andreas made any mistakes in that sense. Uh, didn't really give him a, his opponent much opening, much of an opening. Yeah, I think he may have been a bit surprised when he activated that monster reborn and didn't, didn't manage to end the, the game man. on that yeah. turn, but I don't know if it was possible for him to have done that. So the one thing that we learned is you never want to open like the tiniest window of opportunity for Din Kabui. He's just going to take advantage of that, open that window. Especially on this very explosive Burning of stick. Yeah, it just goes through and I just heard the stories in telling that this is what he did to Jonas Koschel in the round before who went undefeated up until this point and now I can see why. Yeah, I'm that was the toned down version, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, it took him only one turn against. Uh, Apparently, Jonas. yeah. So, Din Kapui going into this finals, we, we did say that he hadn't won a larger event before, but it's very hard to not root for him. Uh, oh, he, oh, no, that was impressive. His opponent is either going to be Sahab Ali Shah. Um, or Nico Schlierkamp, is that correct? I thought it was Bowden. I thought we had Bowden in the finals. You might have just written it down wrong. Um, yeah, we might have. Oh, yeah, Bowden won this if one. If I'm going to be honest, I know who Dinka is rooting for. Because <laughs> he has probably beaten about 20 Sky Striker decks. 
He probably wants another Sky Striker deck and not an Altergeist deck, yeah. which is known to be a bit of a nasty that, matchup for that Burning Abyss. Definitely true, yeah. He, he's going to be rooting. He's basically going to be getting up and saying to, to the opponent of Bowen, come on, guy, you can do it. You go, can Nico. Do it. go, Nico. Yeah, go, Nico. All right, so it's Nico Schleerkamp versus uh, Bowden Temnik in the other semi finals. We don't know who won yet. Um, maybe the other guys know because we're going to take you to them now. Luke and Matt, let's go. Thank you very much, Ollie. Uh, we don't know either. Uh, we've got um, some information that um, Nico won, but you're telling us that you got information that he lost. So, uh, yeah, I think we need to... I guess it'll be a surprise to see yeah, who ends up in the to, finals, right? Now, yeah. Wow, that game, what, man. What a, Those what games what were match. incredible. Uh, I, I, I tuned out after the, 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 the start of the second game. I was like, oh, no, yeah, it's done. Let's, let's wait for game three. No, Dean Carbui, he had, he had other plans. Uh, Dean Carbui, wow, just like... Game one, you sort of saw the explosiveness of his deck. Yeah. It's just like the door was cracked open. He's like, oh, okay, so just Beatrice draw. I'm going second. I want to go second. I have evenly matched. Oh, my opponent's only got one card. Okay, I'm not going to do it. I yeah. can't really do anything. He gets caught by the Alec on his own Beatrice. I was going to say, tell prevents, us about that. Because we've seen a lot of, every time we've seen the Burning Abyss deck, the Sky Striker deck has been taking the Beatrice with Widow Anchor and linking it away to officially get rid of it. Yeah. But the Alec preventing it from actually shifting control put a massive break into any kind of shenanigans that could happen. Yeah. What a, what a play. And then uh, Dinkai just went, oh, next game. Yeah. It it's just pretty, runs straight into you. It's pretty clear that he's been playing this matchup all day, all yesterday, and that play has won him a bunch of games. Yeah, he definitely knows how to get to the magic numbers on the, yeah. on his monsters. And it got a lot easier with things like Boral Sword Dragon as well. Yeah. Game two, it looked like things were going bad. His hand at one point was pretty dreadful, yeah, and then he shuffles back. Two Mali, three, three um, Kaiju. Kaijus. <laughs> and like, he shuffles back uh, one of the cards uh, with his uh, Sucker's Light. light. Finds another second light. Yeah, He's like, yeah. all right, we're back in business. They normal drew, summon the graph. drew awful, didn't he, off those two, though? Yeah, yeah, normal summons the graph, gets through on 700 life points, and then finds a victory just from nothing. Yeah, amazing. Just literally created an art attack. Yeah, I think one of our judges just walked in front of the camera, but that's okay. It's okay. They, he didn't know any better. He didn't know any better. It's okay, we're getting, it's getting late here. Well, we've got both of the finalists. I don't know who the other finalist is. We're gonna we, figure it out. We, we do have them somewhere in the venue. And we're gonna be right back with the finals of the 200th YCS here in Utrecht. Don't go away. <laughs> 